I'm not saying I'm going to rule the world or I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job. You have to Tribe Called Quest. You say the whole thing. <laughs> welcome, welcome back to a pod named Kickback. It's like a Tribe Called Quest. You say the whole thing. Oh, thanks. Still, <laughs> still known as the Black CNN and the revolution will be televised. I'm no brace new to Righteous Ratchet. If you throw it, I'll catch it. If you got it, I'll match it. Every week we write back at it. I am the Black Savage. The Magneto with my people. Bars. Bars. <laughs> <laughs> Who else you got in here with me this week? We got gifted with Jack. We snatching summer bodies all day long. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> the man can snatch their bodies too? Shoot. Uh, I meant that in the other way. But okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point, J. Lou. Be here. J. Lou, what to do? Hey, man, we here, man. <laughs> All right, we here, so uh, we got shout out our sponsors. Shout out Moe's Marvelous Cleaning. Hit her up at moesmarvelouscleaning.com to get 10% off any future cleaning. MySexRoom.net. Hit them up. Use code KICKBACKERS to get 10% off of Ooh. everything else. <laughs> now, All right. Uh, oh, and if you're in the state of Georgia, well, if anywhere in the United States, holla at me and J. Lou for your life insurance needs. Yiddy. Yes. Um, let's see. Oh, well, I guess we should start with high low. Yes. Um, find my little drop. Now, high low. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? I think you should go first. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's see. My high of the week. Um, I saw a little bit of the fruits of my labor this week. You know, you got to take it easy. Don't, you know, you want to stack and get everything right, get the business off the ground and do everything you're supposed to do, all yeah. the hard work, stay low, keep firing. But um, <laughs> I treated myself a little bit this week, so I felt good. Felt and good to treat yourself a little bit. This week. Treat yourself in self-care. That's a good thing. Exactly. 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 Okay. Um, do I have a low of the week? My energy had been a little off. Um. I call them the demons, the devil, evil, manipulation, and new self-esteem. Little, little demons been in the back of my mind. So I've been having a get out of here, get out of here. But um, other than that, it's been a pretty good week. Good, good, good. Yeah. I don't want to say my high is um, I'm just excited. Um, we're moving to a new gym, so I'm excited about that. That is my mm -hmm. high. So I'm excited. We start tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. Um, like I, I don't have a low, y'all. I just. <laughs> Where, I, do, I do have a loan. Okay. We are full, y'all. All this traffic this past weekend. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I went to the sauna downtown, midtown, stuck in track, stuck in a carnival, first of all. So I just had to get, we all got out of the car and just started watching the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> it might as well. Yeah, yeah, I definitely ain't playing that thing, right? <laughs> oh, my right. God. I got all about it. <laughs> Where the new gym at, Jack? It's going to be off of Headland and the Low. Shout out to Outcast. Um, but it's called DPAC ATL. Okay. So we'll okay. mm -hmm. we'll definitely come through and uh, to, to watch some of the classes. Huh? I don't know if you didn't say participate. I said we can come through and watch. No, yeah. you have to participate. I don't do no watching. No. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm in a gym. I done redid my, my membership. I've been working out, so I am back in the gym. Man, my kid. Hey. Give it up for myself. 
Love to hear that. Uh, how low? You know, my low is, is, is very similar to yours, New. Kind of getting out your head, you know. You know, sometimes you be pessimistic for no reason. Uh, trying to think about stuff that you should have did, shouldn't have did, stuff like that. So just kind of getting out of your head with that one. Yeah. Uh, the high, like, it was a good, I had a good weekend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I told my daughter, she graduated, she went through her bridge ceremony. She, yeah. she saw Kenny God. Like, we had an action pack. I took her to get toys one day. We went to my brother's house and so she could play with them and cooked out and all that stuff one day. We went to Six Flags Water Park one day. I saw y'all. <laughs> yeah. To go see Mermaid the other day. So we 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 went we went hard <laughs> for the whole little thing. <laughs> yeah. So so you gotta do the official uh, little mermaid review for us. Cause yeah. I ain't seen it. It's too early. It's it, it's the same movie. It's, it's the same, same movie. Well, I, <laughs> I didn't see the first one. I've no. never seen Little Mermaid. I'm about to take my daughter, so I need to know. It's, okay. It, okay. It, it, it's so good. It's, it's, it's good. It's worth. It's worth seeing. Okay. Obviously, you know, Hallie uh, can. She can actually sing, so that's always a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, save, save it for Netflix and chill. Okay. Okay. Tell, tell, tell us doing Netflix and chill. <laughs> and um, I guess it's time for our viral story of the week. Week, week, week. My left, left stroke, stroke just, just went, went viral. viral. DJ Envy has found himself in the middle of quite a few things. I don't think any of them is where he wants to be. None of them were Ashanti. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, find some of the things I'm going to prefer to be Ashanti. But uh, I guess let's start with, um, he was in a little car show battle with Rick Ross, and going back and forth. And it felt like a couple of lines were getting crossed. Rick Ross was talking about his wife, and he going to pick a ball paddler and all that stuff. But in the middle of all of that, he started talking about how Rick Ross wasn't there for his boy gunplay. We had to put up a GoFundMe. Now, I didn't know anything about this until everything came out. And now I'm going, wow. And uh, so Charlemagne got uh, gunplay on the phone with Envy to, to discuss it. And he was saying, that was about my daughter. You know, My daughter had a heart defect. My girl was fearing for my daughter's life. So she made the GoFundMe. She panicked and asked for the money and put it out there. And now you bringing me into it. And he's basically like, I, I can really feel away. And this can really get physical behind me feeling away. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, I didn't put your personal business out there. I didn't say what it was about. I just said that if he, if he your man, he should, he should have your back. And I think sometimes we do that. We trying to take a shot at one person and then those strays start popping. And that's when you got to be careful when, because you never know when those strays going to go. So um, you, you want to uh, aim, then shoot, not shoot, then aim. So I think that's a, a, a demur for Envy, but he apologized like a man, so I respect it. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully all of that stuff just stops now. Rick Voss went too far, Envy went too far, got gunplay involved into it. So now everybody just chill out. That's my thoughts on that initial situation. What are y'all thoughts? I think they need to let it dead it. Just dead it. The man apologized, dead it. Like it's over with. Yeah, they, they blew it. They, they clearly blew it out of proportion. Um, you know what I'm saying with a with a car show, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous how a car show can you know can escalate to that. Right. It's like you know what I'm saying. So you know, it's just, you know, obviously that was immature. Um, you know, you get to bringing people, wives and children into it. Um, and then the GoFundMe, you know, what I'm saying thing. You know, obviously when you don't know the backdrop of it, even though it wasn't direct, it was you know was, you know kind of a sucker uh, move. And then the gunplay recording the conversation is a little you know uh, very sucker move. Yeah. Um, you know. So it, it's is what all of them with forty plus, gotta be. Like, yeah, gotta be. Uh, how old are we? How old? Yeah, are we? it's like yeah, it's like everybody's over forty, and you, you know, what I'm saying doing stuff on doing stuff for social media, um, with. We didn't even grow up on social media. Ex- exactly. exactly. So you know, <laughs> respect thing that gunplay and envy was able to get on the phone, but then when it leaks, it's like it it takes everything back. Like all right, now y'all back to. Social media, social media. Just grow up, handle it like men. You know, act your age. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I bet uh, Gunplay got a check for that. I think Vic Voss was like, "Yeah, leak the conversation." You know what I'm saying? I, that's just what I what I suspect. Yeah. I don't have no proof, <laughs> but that little silly stuff. I I I I, I believe. It. But again, shout out to Rick Ross. You're getting a lot of promotion, bro. Oh. Of- yeah, him and Envy. They both got. They both their car shows is coming up this weekend, right? Well, if he's already happened, I think um, Rick Ross should be coming up. 
Yeah, Rick Ross is June 3rd, this weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's a uh, own promotion is a good promotion. Yeah. Uh, speaking of promotion, NJ is still in the headlines. This time with his business partner, Flippy NJ, better known as Caesar. Allegedly been doing some shady business practices. They're saying that you know people have been giving him six figure checks. Um, you give him a hundred thousand, he flips it to one twenty. You give him one hundred ten thousand, give you back one forty. And then <laughs> on that third time is when he seems to uh, lose the number. That's when he <laughs> start bouncing. So he gets a little bit, send it back to you. He gets a little bit, send it back extra. He gets a little bit, goes ghost. Now right. he's on the internet saying, "Hey, call me if you if I feel like I did you wrong, call me." But everybody's saying he's not answering the phone. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So don't get on the radio talking about call me if you ain't call me back. <laughs> now, is this the same dude that had I saw uh, on social media that um, Envy and him was going back and forth? Is that the same dude? Dark nah, skin? That's, nah. another, nah, that's totally the closer. Oh. You know, okay. Me and Jay Lou been uh, watching his, him and his antics for a couple of years. He pulls some stuff with the Gilly the Gilly and them, Max Maxwell, a uh, handful of other people. So t- the other guy he was going back and forth with, he always has some stuff. He always got some stuff going. Mm-hmm. Always. So uh, even uh, Rob Morrison, is that his name? Morrison Cat? Nah, I don't know. Um, in Georgia, the Tony the Closer was going at? Oh, uh, damn, what's his name? Um, is it Rob Morrison? He always like, what's up, King? Peace, King? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I know, yeah, I know he was going yeah. at... Uh, Hey, it's another brother in Atlanta that does real estate. He was putting together like these yeah. big real estate movements, financial. Uh, yeah. Everybody putting a, a big pot in, 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 in his defense. He hasn't been proven wrong yet. Who Tony? Yeah, he been messy. I, I agree, it been messy and kind of you know like look to handle it a different way. Mm-hmm. But ain't nobody deliberately say he was wrong. Like he like he was calling old boy out, and you know it came out, and this one came out so. He ain't been proven wrong. It's just like, you know, you nobody likes the way he goes about it. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of it, though. People don't, you know what I'm saying? He don't understand. Like, that. that's a part of it. Like, how you communicate, you know what I'm saying? When you with me and against me, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of that matters. But he hasn't been proven, you know, quote, unquote, wrong. You need to say it's Jeff Morrison. Or whatever his name is. Jeff. Jay Morrison. Jay, Jay Morrison. Morrison. Jay that's, Morrison. That, that's what it's it is. Great minds. We, we'll put it together sometime. Yeah, we worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully they can work it out because uh, flipping NJ Caesar apparently owes uh, eight figures of money to people all over the United States who've been investing. Envy took him on a breakfast club, gave him his platform, been doing all these seminars with him. So do you guys think Envy is culpable in this? He gave the guy the platform. If the guy's really been robbing all these people, taking their hard-earned money, does Envy share any culpability in that? Um, it depends on how deep he's in it. We don't know how deep he's in it with this guy. Right. I mean, if he just provided the platform and the guy, let's just like you raise your child and they go out and do something. People go, blame the parent. No, I raised them right. <laughs> they in the now. Like they have to make their own decisions now. So if he did that on his own, um, he needs to be held accountable for it. But if Envy has anything to do with it, we don't know or how deep or how much he's got into it or if he's been seen at so many seminars or being seen doing some of this stuff that the guy has been doing, then understandable. But I don't know. I don't know about this one. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm with you. I don't think you, like, if you give somebody, because it's tough, like, if you give somebody a platform, are you at, you know what I'm saying, are you at fault for this? Because if we do that, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta add a lot of people in there. You know? Right. They were partners, too, in, in whatever capacity. Yeah, but but none of them, nobody is saying that Envy owe him money. So no, no, they're they're trying to since they can't get at him, they're now <laughs> trying to blame it on Envy. Yeah, because yeah, because he's allowed, yeah, and that, and that's what happened in the, the like the Ernie Leisure folks. They kind of they they spoke about it as well about different people they've had on their platform and how like look if we got a hundred you know we've got five hundred shows and four people end up doing something unsavory two years after they had us on our show, don't put that on us. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I understand that perspective. Obviously, how you react, how you respond to it once you find out somebody's doing somebody different, that's what makes you culpable. So if you know he's doing something questionable now and you continue to give him a voice, then I think that's when you buy it. You know what I'm saying? That, that's when you buy the, just buy the issues that you have. 
Um, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it's tough to say he, you know, I would put blame on him, but obviously, you know, it, you know, it, 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 it lends to itself that like who you, who you accompany yourself with, you know, you can, you kind of breathe some of that, you know, that responsibility, um, that negative energy. Uh, so you got to work to make sure that it's okay on the backside, but then everybody got to understand like some, sometimes if it's too good to be true, damn it, it is. Like, like you giving somebody and they're they going to flip it right away. Like, look, ask, what do you get out of this? Like some people just want, you know what I'm saying? Like we live in a, a society where like work is not valued. So people just want a quick flip and a quick return. So you fall for things that you probably shouldn't, or you listen to people that you, you know what I'm saying? You probably shouldn't mm -hmm. like, look, know what you're investing in, into period, no matter what it, you know what I'm saying? I don't care what it is. Like know what you're, you know, cause clearly it, like, if I'm investing in you, like so if, if new come to me like, hey, I got a, a play on something podcast related, I can blindly trust him because I know him. Right. Mm -hmm. But if somebody else on social media is saying something, I can't go. I can't blindly trust him. I don't have a, a personal relationship with him. So I think, right. unfortunately, we, 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 we live in a quick, you know, a quick, you know, what I'm saying like a quick money, you know, what I'm saying scheme, you know, what I'm saying, uh, you know, reality and and. and People just got to understand it, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. And I want to say this one thing really quickly. I'm glad you brought mm -hmm. that up. If um, J. Lou or Jackie do anything, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> look, we blame it on you. you all the smoke. Boy, look, on his YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey. <I'm> innocent. <laughs> and we're going to get a recorded voice conversation, too, between yeah. all three of us. <laughs> New gonna be the one to get everybody in trouble. Like, look, man, I was just doing that shit for new, man. I was just on that no. Like, man, what you Here we go. Here we go. Everybody knows it. <laughs> <laughs> and moving right along. <laughs> it's the mayor. And this is a real what the fuck story. In North Korea, um, well, the U.S., uh, they put out their, I guess, their, I don't want to call it the religion report, but I do think that might be the name. Uh, hey, we on TV on the religion report. And um, they said uh, they were looking at different countries and the different practices they have for and against religion or what have you. And they uh, discovered in North Korea that a family was sentenced to life in a prison camp for owning a Bible. The worst part about this story is that family had a two-year-old baby. And that two-year-old baby is going to spend the rest of his natural life in a prison camp. And they say those, those uh, circumstances are horrific. You know, it's physical abuse. It's, you know, the, the, it's, the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The rations, the, uh, the essentials are rare, sparse. You don't have a lot. Um, and in other cases, they're killed. Now, they have churches in North Korea, but they say that's just for decoration. Like when the people come to visit the country, they go in there, but the actual citizens, if they're caught in there lingering around too much, they can be arrested, they can be killed. A mother and son were sentenced to the uh, the fireman squad for openly worshiping Jesus. And uh, there were other people who were given the pigeon death, which I guess you're stressed apart, hanging from your, your limbs until you die. And say so that pain is so terrible that they just rather die than go through it. And um, I didn't know this kind of stuff was still going on. It's so wild that I consider peaceful religions, like you know, all religions, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, but in North Korea, they're Buddhist. That's one of the most peaceful religions, you know, you are your own god. And if there's always a sect, you have the, you know, the the, the crazy Muslims, you have the Crazy Buddhists, you got, you know, the white people that's Christian. You know, it's always a crazy group of every religion. Right. Um, but damn, that, that's heartbreaking, man. For real. Heartbreaking. And um, coming from a military family, my dad and my brother were both stationed over there. And it's been going on for a long time. Um, that religion, that they're not about Christianity at all. No Bibles, no nothing. Also, you know, for a long time, you know, they don't really worship women. So a lot of families that had or women, mothers that had um, girls, they would leave them on the streets. So you'll see a lot of the, the, the female babies on the streets because they'd rather have a boy than a, um, a girl. Wow. So, 
it's it's harsh. It's harsh. Yeah, and unfortunately, not surprised, right? Right when it when it comes to religion, um, you know, and I'm you know I'm a Christian, but you know I I I make the choice based on the matriarch of my family. So I you know so you know obviously you know you know what I'm saying so everybody you know is is something different. And I understand that. I guess the issue is how vitriol religion get right so for something that's supposed to be so you know encompassing and loving it always goes you know what i'm saying for majority it, it goes violent mm -hmm. majority of the time it goes violent like most wars start because of religion it's all you know so it's just you know heartbreaking that it's not surprising right you know you, you hear you're like dang it's mm -hmm. messed up but you know if you look you know the last you know you know, last thousands of years, that's that's what's happening, and, that, and, and there's and there's stories throughout that every single week. Yeah, the Christian Crusades where they were going through Africa, killing people. They were going to different villages, saying, "Well, it, it made every family stand in front of their their homes." They said, "What do you believe in?" Uh, "I believe in Allah." Kill him. What do you believe in? "I believe in you know ancient Egyptian God." Kill him. What you what you believe in? Uh, Jesus. I will let you live. So everybody's the Muslims have done it, the Christians have done it. Now we're hearing about the Buddhists doing it. Um and, and it's been going on from the beginning of time. Yeah. I mean, it's just wild, man. It's 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 terrible. Um, prayers up, positive energy to everybody affected by this and everybody got happens too, because this is more than just North Korea. But yeah. you know, North Korea, goodness gracious, we gotta do something with them. This this is something that it we found out about it. You know, like you know, it people actually report on it. It's, it's, it's happening on a regular basis, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, on a light, more lighthearted note, uh, Jackie's old high school boyfriend, Al Pacino, <laughs> is expecting a child with his 29-year-old boo thing. Shout out to Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> he is now 82. I, um, a part of me goes, okay, you know, cool, whatever. But another part of me goes, I don't think I did a 29 year old and I ain't 82. So when you're 82 and then like, I, I don't get it. I mean, if you, if you like it, I love it. If you're happy, go do it. You got your money. You got, you got the freedom to do whatever you want, but that's just. Because I think men, it's almost, it's mostly like, I want somebody to have my kids. I want somebody young that's going to be on here on this earth longer than me that take care of my child. Her body is still nice and tight. Hey. I don't even think it's about the baby. I think she probably wanted the baby so she can get, make sure she got a check coming. He just want that sweet little tender thing. I mean, hey, it works both ways. We see. <laughs> nice. Amen. But I'm be like 102 when the baby is 20. Well, when the child is 20. It's like... Oh, are they having these conversations now? Are they having these conversations as preparing... For the child not to have another parent, not, well, to lose a parent, are we? Are they having conversations about that? Because you might not make it to 90, 90, not put it out there, but you know, we don't know when we're gonna leave this earth. So having a child I mean, before a man, mm. that's what I'm saying. Like, like make it to the birth. You eighty, right? He eighty two. Yeah, yeah. He, he might not make it. You, you, you make make it. Get expectations already. Right, so he doesn't want to be a father. It's not this old man's go. I'm gonna have me a kid. He's not gonna be here. You know what I'm saying? 82. The child won't be here till he's probably 83. He's not gonna be here. I mean, obviously he got his advice from um, Robert De Niro. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> you know, little bosom buddies. Tags even around there. 80 years old. <laughs> hey, they def they definitely boys. Hey. I was gonna say, look, I'm, I'm trying to hit that. Whenever my Viagra come through, I'm gonna be able to hit it. I will give you a baby and some money. She said, okay. Hey. And, and the kickback is a, they, they type in it. They they fall. They believe in it. They agree <laughs> with me. <laughs> oh man, but him and and uh, uh, what's the guy, Robert De Niro, both doing it. Let that be Forrest Whitaker with Chloe Bailey or Haley Bailey. Oh man, everybody be up in arms. Like Twitter go crazy. Yeah, yeah, go crazy. Everybody gonna be up and on, but it's still gonna go on. They got he must have been grooming her. He was grooming her. You know what they're gonna say? Hey, a lot of yeah. yeah. So maybe Albertino and Robert Durant grooming too. Say this in high school 
We always saw the girls that was with the older guys that would come and pick and them up. It was up. never okay. Cars, it like, was never you know? okay. <laughs> it was never okay. <laughs> we we saw a lot of things. Happened. It was very common. Very. Common. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So so it was uh, racism. Giving Ep um, Epstein vibes though. <laughs> definitely. That might be what you know. What I'm not gonna speculate. I'm not gonna speculate. <laughs> but I think. I think they being dumb in this because he's not going to be there for the kid, but if she can raise it on her own and she has the money to do it, then they can be dumb. But there's some other people out here being dumb as well, and we definitely got to address them. So dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Now, I always thought Danny Lee was a victim with all this, the baby stuff. It doesn't mean she's not. I always <laughs> her as a sympathetic figure, and I'm a very pretty woman, and I'm very talented, and I always saw her in that light. And mistakes are made, especially this mistakes. I've, I've, I haven't done this. I haven't <laughs> pulled over before and it wasn't right. So I'm not even speaking to that portion of it. But um, to be double the limit and to have hit somebody and taken off, and they used a word that I wasn't familiar with, but it sounds like she dragged somebody. This is the I mode. I about to ask you what's the details on that because I read that, I read it twice, and I was like, did she hit somebody and drag somebody? Yeah, I couldn't tell that if they were meant saying like that was a person. I think they call it the mope. I think the mope is usually like the suspect. Nah, the moped. She she hit somebody on a moped. But oh, she, so she carried the moped, yeah, but not yeah, the person. She dragged the moped. Yeah, they said they said she didn't she didn't oh. even know she hit them. <gasps> oh, she probably was too she probably was too drunk and didn't and didn't know she hit them. That's not good. Or you know you just didn't notice. I don't know what kind. You know, well it, it is a moped. So I don't know how you know how you hit it, how late it was. So she probably just didn't know notice that she hit something. Okay, our, um, ubiquitous clandestine informers from the kickback world, the kickbackers, <laughs> I just said the, the details are she dragged a man for about a mile. <gasps> oh. The man was seriously injured. <gasps> but he was on a moped, right? Well, well, I guess the... he dragged the, both of them. Okay. Yeah, so he, so he, probably, he probably ain't uh, your yeah, hand kick off. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, uh, let's, I would say, see, when Bruce Jenner did this, he had a sex change, became Cali. Uh, we could become, what's his Kay name? Caitlyn Jenner, so that mm -hmm. he could go to women's prison. Right. Um, Danny, I don't know what you can do. You're already a woman. At least, at least, at least she, she, he's alive. Serious, you know what I'm saying? Serious conditions, but, they, you know, saying nothing, nothing life threatening. Obviously, we just saw this what what three six months ago with Henry Ruggs, the first round draft pick that Ooh. got drunk, hit and run and killed uh, you know killed a, uh, a woman. Um, so you know, I, you know, obviously this is uh, you know it was extremely stupid to do, especially with the amount of resources you have, the amount of resources that's out here with Uber, Lyft, taxis, private drivers. What you know, what I'm saying? you know, you have so many options for you to be that drunk. And they said the person in the, in the vehicle with her. Was drunk, you know what I'm saying? Was drunk as hell too. So basically, two dummies in the in the car together. So I'm like, like none of I'm like, like, nobody can say, hey, look, this. We just nobody. gonna get a. We, yeah, we're we're rich, famous celebrities. Even if you poor, well, if you poor, maybe you can't afford it. But if you're a moderately middle middle we, class, average human, you should still maybe call Uber or Lyft. Yes. Definitely. Well, my heart goes out. Prayers will go out to her. We don't know what she's going through. Um, but Danny Lee, come on now. You have a baby to take yeah. care of. Yeah. And the man she injured and his family. Exactly. That, exactly. So yeah, you, you got to get, get it together. And I just hope, and I'm just going to put this out to the left, I just hope that the baby doesn't try to, you know, do anything behind this. Because, you know, they're not really, hopefully they're on good terms now. But yeah, they they should be all right right now. So I hope so. So I hope he is supporting her. I hope he's, I hope whatever she's going through, maybe it was just a night out on the town. I know it was in Miami. Maybe she was just having fun. But if yeah. it's deep that, I just hope she gets help. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend, you know cops going to be out there. I don't know why you wouldn't plan that before. Even like Memorial Day weekend, you know they have every cop trying to make quotas and whatever. Like, like you couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just stupid. Yeah. yeah. You can even, you know. It's just not even common sense. At all. I got so much to say about that, but I'm, I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let it go. But um, I do want to uh, congratulate somebody who who did something smart, who did do something right, who got out here and had a hell of a career, and somebody I'm very happy to cheer for and support and clap for. 
uh, I'll tell you in, in a second who it is. If it's sports, if it's fashion, if it's music, um, if it's hustling, whatever, you're on a marathon, you know? If it's, so. marathon, if it's sports, that's how we started it. If it's sports. And that brings us to Carmelo Anthony, who has just announced his retirement. Yeah, yeah but I mean, let me give him a round of applause for Melo. Yeah. Carmelo Anthony is one of the greatest small forwards in the history of basketball. Um, when they said he wouldn't change his game and try to get rid of him, he altered his game, came back and played on a camp for the playoff teams. Mm -hmm. He's one of the greatest, most prolific scorers of his generation. He was right in that draft for LeBron James. A lot of people say he should have won rookie of the year over LeBron. <laughs> yeah, uh, went to Syracuse, won a national championship with Kenya Martin in DC zone, uh, DeMar Johnson. Uh, so he dominated in, in high school, won championships in college, won four gold medals in the Olympics. Never got that elusive NBA ring, but he did every damn thing else. Am I right, J. Lou? Did he do everything else? Hey, man, a very successful career. Played, you know, you know the high school, you know what I'm saying? The high school days back at Oak Hill was crazy. Syracuse to, you know, be the best player on, you know, as a freshman and win a national championship. And that's when college basketball was legit. When, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that many one and dones. Like people were sitting, you know what I'm saying, was actually there. Uh, for a couple of years and built built team able to kind of go to Syracuse and get them over the hump. Uh, mm -hmm. First year um, was very very successful career. Probably one of the most tough toughest covers offensively than anybody. Most probably most one of the most skilled you know skill uh, scores of you know of anyone. And you know and obviously he gets a you know gets a you know hit for the the no championship. But look, it takes a lot to have to win a championship. Mm -hmm. it, it it takes the right teammates to win a championship. So like when people say that, I'm like, look, there's a lot of players that got championships. It's not better than Carmelo. It's I just there's a lot of players is, you know, they got championships, you know, that's not better than Charles Barkley. It's like they they certain players you just kill them just for not having a championship. Like look, mm -hmm. Hall of Famer and is and he's a unanimous Hall of Famer. That that says you the best to ever do what you do. In, in a position in a sport that, that only accepts a couple hundred pe uh, people a year, you know what I'm saying? A year, so it's big, and, and it looked like his son legit. So he, he coaching his son up because his son, uh, his son Kion is, is legit though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's legit, legit though. <laughs> like, like he, 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 yeah, he doing and, NBA doing NBA moves at that level. Mm -hmm. He's Carmelo's also a five percent of piece of the nation of gods and nurse. Um, and I tell you, if, if you ever watch like the Grammys and they get up on stage and they be like, you know, I want to thank, you know, God or my Lord and Savior, whatever. We never hear a five percent of get to say, I want to shout out to the guys on the earth or shout out to my people. We only hear when Jay-Z do it, maybe Erica Badu, maybe Busta Rhymes or Carmelo Anthony. So <laughs> that was always a reminder like, all right, Melo, all right, Melo. So shout out to him for that. Uh, Jack, I don't know if you're too into basketball. What you know about Melo? Besides, he was married to Lala. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he was very prominent in the basketball scene. I used to watch him a lot. Um, but you know, I stopped watching basketball after Michael Jordan. You know, when they used to fight. So. <laughs> okay. But I mean, I've been watching his son though. His son is really nice, like you said, Jay Lou. His son. Yeah. Is really nice. That's crazy. We're starting to see the second and third generation of kids. We're yeah. old enough now to see that. And mm -hmm. Scotty Pippen's son is in the league. You know, Glenn Rice's son, Gary Payton's son. LeBron James's son is going to be in the league in a couple of years. LeBron's son is going to be in the league in a couple of years. Yeah. It's crazy. And they legitimately deserve it, too. Like, a lot of people, you yeah. know what I'm saying, you do nepotism is, is, is prevalent in a lot of, uh, a lot of industries. Um, but yeah, this is one with those those kids. They 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 legitimately deserve it. They put in the work. They are the you know what I'm saying they are the top you know what I'm saying athletes, and they deserve to get there. So it's a little yeah. bit you know, you know some you know there's a lot of nepotism and you know it's good to see they actually do the work. Yeah, yeah. and some of the kids outside and their fathers. Kobe Bean Bryant was a better player than his father. Yeah, uh, Steph. I used to watch Steph Curry's father all the time in Charlotte. Yeah. Steph Better player than Dale. Clay Thompson was a better player than his father. Yeah. Like, we're starting to see that now, which is wild, which is wild. Um, I'm not going to, 
uh, sit on that too long, pause. But I do want to get back to uh, uh, one of the most infamous segments of the pod. Even though they try to sue us and we can't play the song all the way, they're still everybody's favorite. I switched it up a little bit this week again. And I wanted to know because I remember someone telling me this and I heard, I was like, ooh, but you would do that. Wow. Okay. And it kind of threw me off. But see, I think we've all seen both sides of this. So I kind of want to see where y'all shake out at. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious. Let's say you work eight hours a week for someone else, you get 150000 a year, and, you know, your days off, your days off, your benefits are what they are, but you're working for someone else, you could be replaced. Um, you know, your vacation days have to be submitted, and so forth and so on. So you're essentially a worker, but you're getting the money and you're getting your weekends off, but you're building up somebody else's business. So it's a trade off. Or would you rather have to do 12, 13 hour days, you know, get to 150,000, same salary, but it's your own business, it's your own baby? Own business, hands down. Tell me why. Um, because I'd rather work for myself. I want to build up myself. I work for corporate, I work for other people. And once they're done with you, they're done with you. And you don't have anything to show for it but stress, no sleep. <laughs> so, mm -mm. Own business, hands down. What about you, Jayla? Um, obviously, for me, it's my own business. Um, but I understand it is not for everybody, right? And I think, unfortunately, you know, like when, and I think we hinted at it earlier, like when people don't value work, um, like building a business is tough. Yes. Like it is super tough. Uh, you you know, is 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 other things, family life, and other things that kind of pull from you. Uh, so obviously, mine will be a business, but it would be a business where I can work that twelve to thirteen hours, so I can get those hours back later on in life Thanks. some people will work their own business for 12 or 13 hours and then when that business is over you know you don't know where you are you know what i'm saying you know because you know you just you know it, it was just it was just work 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 without any type of plan to build you know what i'm saying a, a long lasting future so for me personally it would be build the own business for that reason where i'm i'm building for myself i i understand that i'm working a lot you know i'm working more now but the goal is to work less later. Uh, so you got to have a plan for that. That's not for everybody. Having a job or a career is an honorable thing. So, you know, we're not saying shit on jobs or shit on, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, some people getting, getting, you know, getting the thing where they, where they doing. That's not what we saying. It's just, right. it's, I, I think every time I have my back against the wall, I went and got a job. Exactly. It's a personal so. preference <laughs> and you understand the, you know the sacrifices you make for uh for it but yeah for me it'll be the career because i have a plan that if i can work that 12 to 13 14 15 hours at a certain point i can stop completely or i can let it or i can look at it work or something you know you know something i can pass down but if it wasn't if i didn't have that i would i would definitely get a, a good paying uh, job at a career like i had with corporate um like i still do while i'm building my business and I would invest because it's two ways to kind of make it long term. You can have that business that can make money for you later on, or you can use what you have to invest so that investment can make you money later on. So it's an honor, but it's a preference, I would say, business. Yeah, right. and from I say with me, uh, from a, a kid, I always it was just beating into my head: be be your own boss, be your own, be an entrepreneur, own your own business, don't work for nobody. Because fresh out of high school, I was selling my music and other things and working for myself. So I, right. it's what I fell into, it's what I knew. And then, like I said, the things got a little rough, CDs ain't selling, weed ain't selling, whatever ain't doing, whatever ain't doing. <laughs> I might have to give me a job and add to this. And I've had a few different entrepreneurial journeys and whenever things got a little rough, I might add a part-time job to it yeah. or I had a full-time job to it. I never yeah. been ashamed of a job. Well, when I was young, I did talk trash. When I was young, I was like, I never work a job. Da, da, da. But as I got older, I realized I'm in a job. A job can save your life. Yeah, it's an people be playing because you could be an entrepreneur and got a business that ain't bringing in no money. I'd rather have a hundred thousand dollar year job than be that person. You know what I'm saying? So it's I, there's there's pros and cons to everything. 
but just who I am as a human. How yeah. I wake up in the morning, what gets me going, it will be to have my own business and to work that. But yeah, again, just to reiterate, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a job. It's you, just not. But, you definitely a creative. <laughs> exactly, exactly, I'm, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah, I thought I was gonna be. I thought I was gonna be Jay Z. Nick stole my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't believe it. Tell me. Now Nelly really stole your life since you want to get time. Ooh, that that the jacket, you know, was not. That wasn't nice. That cut wasn't. Cut on my off. Cut on my That off. was not nice. You know that's that that's you know that's the harshest I can put it. That was just <laughs> not. You know, you, know, you know what Jackie just said. I'm not a nice person. <laughs> I'm not a nice person. <laughs> wow, but see, but you know that's real. Shout out to Ashanti, lady boo. <laughs> but Janelle Monae, well, Janelle Monae coming to Atlanta in October. I'll be there. I think I think that's my kind of crowd. Oh, it's gonna be I think my kind of crowd. <laughs> it's gonna be weird up in there. <laughs> and that's my kind of crowd. <laughs> the weirder, the better. <laughs> Oh man, but um, and hopefully we you know. I know she's gonna come here, and everybody's gonna go to see her. That group, all the fellas, some of the straight ladies, still gonna be curious. It's gonna be a box office success, just like this next young lady. Since Jay Lou, you're the only one that saw it. You can tell us a little bit about uh, a little, huh? Please do, because I'm taking my daughter to know about how the movie was. The Little Mermaid in our Netflix and Chill segment. Let me get the intro popping. Netflix and Chill. What does that even mean? I don't know why I find all these dumb little things. <laughs> I don't know what you find out. We'll take I, it away, I def I definitely recommend it. Uh, I think uh, Hallie did a great job of playing, you know, the, the Little Mermaid. Obviously, the plot is the plot. Uh, so you kind of know what you, you know, you know what you're getting. Uh, but, you know, obviously the singing, um, you know, was A1. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we do certain things we do a little bit better than other people. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Everything. so, so it, you know, it, it, it was great just to be out there and support, um, you know, be supportive of it, you know, cause a lot of people don't, you know, I know a lot of people was kind of Dr. Umar had his special, his special sayings and stuff, which, which, which is funny. But like I said, it, it, it was a good movie. I will recommend seeing it. Um, you know, the, it is what it is. You know what you're getting, uh, but I think it's worth support. And how does that girl like it? Oh, she loves. She she loves anything singing, musicals right. stuff like that. So okay. like, so she loved it. We came back in here. We was playing the uh, playing it, playing the songs and stuff. And she was going to okay. you know, singing the songs that she wanted that she liked out of it. So you know, that was another forty five minutes that we had that I had to deal with. <laughs> so I'm definitely taking it. Yes. How does your daughter? She's nine. Okay. Oh yes. Oh yes. She she'll love it there. She love. Oh, and, and it. You know what? What I did like, I I probably was the only dad that was in there, but it was like a group of like thirty women who had like young 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 young, young daughters, nieces, things of that nature that was there. They was just take. They was taking the pictures. The picture I took. That's why I took it because they was all there. They was like, look, we we take you. I was like, all right. Well, look, let me take. Let me take a picture. She talking, <laughs> putting put the little costume on. I'm like, look, man, you you know what? You can have it your way. Whatever. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. So y'all go support that movie. I'm gonna go. I don't know who I'm gonna go with. And yeah, don't feel like I can go to that movie by myself. Just a 50 year old man in a theater oh, by yourself. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't feel right. I'm yeah. gonna um, adopt the kid or one of my homegirls go with. They go when they take their daughters or something. I'm like Jack. Jack I'm going with you. I'm going with y'all. Go. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how that, I'm, I'm, uh, I do want to see it, and I want to get in my money. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna give it another week for power because shouldn't we give it a week, another week for power or nah? Nah. All right. Well, let's get straight to it. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Uh, Brayden, the real one came back and said Tariq, I don't, the, the whole Drew and Diana turning on Tariq, that little intricate plot they had, it's going to backfire. When they're going to find out y'all set her up to get shot. And my only question is, who will have Tariq back? Because everybody's with Noma, and Noma's against Tariq now. All he got is Brayden. I guess he got his mother. He got Tommy. Tommy, Tommy said, I'm dead in New York. You think Tommy would come back and ride with him? Tommy is just because he wants him to handle the stuff on his own. That's why he's saying it like that. But if he really needs him, Tommy will be there. 
And Tommy got that whole family. Yeah. Uh, I guess he got Davis, the lawyer. I don't know how much he going to do. And then you got to come in and handle some shit and just leave out. That's true, too. Tommy so. come, come kill Norman and Dip. <laughs> right. The, uh, the, the uh, Nigerian dude, he might wind up flipping because he the one that told Brayden that uh, they was trying to kill Tariq. Yeah, Tariq got him in his pocket. And if he brought his family over, what is his family like some Nigerian gangsters? Never know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And, and the rumor is Michael Ely is on next season. Really? What character is he going to play? Hmm. That's so. I was supposed to be auditioning. I got to see if I'm going to do it or not. You know, I'm so busy. But I don't want to spread myself too thin. Or well, Davis ain't doing nothing without the dough. <laughs> yeah, <Jim. laughs> That's true. Um, have y'all seen The Mother, J-Lo's new movie on Netflix? I did. I saw it. I liked it. It didn't blow me away, but it was good enough to watch. Again, but I liked it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent suspense thriller, I guess. Action-packed. Whatever you want to call it, maybe not suspense thriller, maybe action back, action drama. It reminded me of when she was in the, the older, the old movie. Enough was it enough? Yeah, yeah. Was, and that was a remake of uh, Sleeping with the Enemy, Julia Roberts movie. That too. Now Julia Roberts one was fire. I love that joke. Um, but what else? What else have I watched? Um, that's pretty much it. Y'all heard Glorilla in the song? I did. I like it, but you know, I'm, you always gonna get me with the ratchet stuff. So shout out Glorilla, shout oh, out Big Glow, <laughs> Big Glow, <laughs> Glow. <laughs> said, come and come and lick something. I said, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Juicy J did the beat. Oh, this is a hit. Yeah. So is it an act bad summer? Is that how y'all feeling? Yes. Yes, definitely. J Lou. Yeah. Act bad summer. That, that's what Diddy. Fabulous and the city girls say, Yeah, it's an act bad summer, so gonna be, that song is gonna be running through the whole summer. I believe it, I it believe it. acting bad by October, September, October. Yeah, it, it ain't gonna stop because it don't get cold here till November, December, so it's gonna be <laughs> <act bad for laughs> the year. <laughs> All right, man. Um, oh, you know what? I never do this anymore, I'm gonna do it now. This is our little NBA sports music, and I ain't played this in forever. Uh, who you got? Who you got? Man, I got the Nuggets in six, but I tell you what, I done bet against Jimmy Butler and the Heat every series, and I've been wrong every series. So I expect to be wrong, so maybe it's really going seven. I don't know. I don't know what to think, man. I don't know how to, they keep doing it. But obviously, they're better than I think. They're, they're just better. So uh, See, I have no clue. Like I, I think the Nuggets are the superior team. But I thought I thought the Celtics was the superior team. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have no clue. I think I want I think I want Miami to win. Um, but I think Nuggets is a better team, so I, I have no clue. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it just because you know. I don't have the Heat laying the egg. I think they're gonna battle no matter what. I can see a world where the Nuggets do lay an egg. Nuggets have laid an egg in every playoff series, oh, playoff, not series, but every playoff year. Every year they made the playoffs, they had one series where they just stunk it up unexplainably. But they now, the they was in. Jamal Murray, this is this is the, his only time that he's actually played throughout the, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, remember in the bubble, he stuck it up against the Lakers. The year before that, they stuck it up against the Jazz, I believe. Yeah. Then last year, Jamal Murray wasn't it. Yeah. But the two, the last three years he was there, well, the three years that he was there, they snuck it up. Well, they was a starter, I'll say. In, in the last round, whatever round they got eliminated in, they laid a stinker. See, and the last year don't really count. Yeah, I can see, see, I can see the Nuggets sweeping them or winning it in five or six. I can't see the Heat sweeping them or sweeping the Nuggets or beating them in five. Like, because the Heat, they struggle to score points. Yeah, I'm I'm picking the, the Nuggets, and you sit, but I I, I I ain't saying that with no basis. I'm saying that with all trouble. I'm saying that with all settled in my chest. Picking the Nuggets, but I, I'm I, I, the Nuggets. I, 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 
Huh? I do want Jimmy to win one. Um, and I think Spoh's probably, you know, I think this will put Spo in a, a top tier coaching of all time. But yeah. I th- I think the Nuggets are the superior better team. They're supposed to be. Yeah. We'll see if Bam if look, I'm high on Bam uh, on Bam, so if Bam can, you know, show the world he a legit number two, then maybe. They, they say Hero's supposed to be back. Yeah, they, yeah, not, yeah. Probably maybe game three or game four with some, yeah, and that would definitely help them scoring wise. So they they struggle scoring. Yeah, I don't know, man. Every time I bet against them, they just win. I can't explain it. <laughs> it's, it's like when you don't, you can't explain it. You can't really. What can you do? You just gotta go. Yeah. Go. Jackie, what you think? I'm going with whatever you say. You can't go what I say because I don't watch basketball. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what I say. <laughs> All right, uh, Nuggets and seven, man. Nuggets and seven. <laughs> I'll give him one more game just because he's Jimmy. Jimmy and Spo can get three wins. So Nuggets and seven. Jokic proves that he's the best player in the league. He has two finals. He has two MVPs. This will be a finals MVP. And he's not even in year 10 yet. He proves that he's as good at, better than Patrick Ewing and all them other mid tier centers, I guess. I don't know, man. But um, I can see it. Yeah, we're going to see, man. We're going to see. All right, who's the best player to never win a title? Barkley, Harden, Malone. Damn. Jokic. Yeah, I don't think you could put... I don't, I don't think you could do... Uh, I don't think you could add uh, Jokic and, uh, and Luka yet. Too soon? Yeah. Like, maybe the retired guys. They, they, they don't have a shot to do it. I'm gonna go with Barkley, man. I think Barkley is getting crushed under the he didn't win a ring, so they just crushed him down to he was nothing. He was the best power forward I ever saw before Tim Duncan. Okay. Uh I would I would agree with that. I would agree. I I, I think it's Barkley. Okay. Hang on, my heart, my heart wanna say, my heart wanna say I uh, yeah. yeah, that's my heart. I know. I know. If I'm being if I'm being honest, that's wrong. Yeah, I go Barkley. <laughs> yeah, you should like Nina. She'd be like, Patrick Ewan. Like, Patrick Ewan? Where did he come from? <laughs> yeah. Old school Knicks fan. Um, see, I'll say AI too. See, she was, she, she was, she was, you oh, know yeah, that's she, your heart. She, and she the one that'll say uh, Patrick Ewan too. She really want to say Patrick Ewan, but she went with AI thinking that's a safe bet. <laughs> you, we hip. <laughs> I, um, before we get up out of here, we can. They, um, we never do this at the end of the episodes. I notice everybody else does this. So, Zay Lou, where can they find you on social media? What do you got going on next week? <laughs> I know uh, where they can find me at uh, JWO Agency, J Lou 8509, uh, JWO Um, You know, any insurance needs, hit me up. Um, you know, questions, whatever you got, let me know. Oh, Jackie. We at building. Okay, get people underscore Jack. That's on everything. You can also download my fitness app. It's on Android or Google Play and um, Apple Store. And we get these bodies together. So hit me up. That's right. I did two sit-ups today. In my arms. <laughs> in my arms, though. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'm everywhere uh, at No Breaks New. And when I got on, hold up. And no breaks new. When I put my glasses on, I'm now the life insurance guy. So you can look me up on Instagram at Nile N I L E, the life insurance guy. For if you're looking for a job or you're looking for life insurance, holler at me. And when I take these off, I'm no breaks new. N O breaks in you everywhere. <laughs> and um, let me put them back on so I can, I can see what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and we Jassy J up in here. Um, I want to thank y'all for tuning in for another great week. If you came in late, hit rewind and listen to it again. Give us a like and subscribe on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Audible, uh, Pandora. We everywhere. (laughs) iHeart. Everywhere. Except Facebook. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, if you want to watch the video, you got to go to YouTube. You want to watch this live, it's Wednesdays at 8 p.m., the audio is out every Thursday morning at 5 a.m. It can be the first thing you do um, after morning sex. Holla at us. Uno. <laughs> we out. <laughs> yeah. No breaks. Yeah.